Hey everyone, it's Brayden here for gshelper.com and today I'm going to show you how to pick three random numbers and then spawn unique actors from those random numbers. Now, uh, this is kind of like an addition video to our video which, which we did a couple years ago when Tables came out that would show you how to pick three random numbers with no duplicates. I'm going to do exactly that except I'm not going to be using a table where we remove rows. Why? Because uh, I've been asked by a couple people how you would do that without having to remove table rows. And maybe they're just getting to this bit in their game where you know they're using that table a lot and they can't afford to be removing that row or something like that. And they don't want to have to go into the trouble of, of messing around that with the table bit. So I'm going to show you how to do this with the new behaviors and functions in GameSalad 11. Uh, this specifically is going to show you how to pick three unique numbers and then spawn three unique actors based upon those numbers, of course, with no duplicates. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. I've created a blank project and I've set it to iPad Landscape Orientation. Uh, I'm going to go into the Scenes tab here and into my initial scene, double-clicking there, and you'll see that I've created four quick images and I've imported them here. Uh, those are just for testing purposes so we can quickly see uh, if the actors are unique. Uh, and so what I'm going to do now is just uh, click the gem icon and drag it up into the actors palette and it's going to create an actor and I'm going to go into it and make sure the size is set to 120. I just want a nice number there and instead of uh, naming it gem icon we're just going to call it icon so that when we spawn this actor we know which, I, uh, which actor is which. Now while we're in here I'm going to create two self attributes. They're going to be integer attributes and we're going to name the first one which icon and then we're going to name the second one which image and leave them both to set to zero right now and we'll come back to that in a minute. I'm going to click the back button and click the attributes tab here in the inspector and I'm going to create one global integer attribute called how many found. Now this tutorial is going to go over uh, the loop behavior and the table search function and how we can use those to pick three random uh, unique numbers. So I'm going to go back to the home button here and into the tables tab and we're going to create one table and we're going to name this uh, chosen ID. And we're going to just double click this and make sure that the type is set to integer so that we can apply a uh, number in there. And going back into our scene, let's create one more actor and we're going to name it Round Rules. And I'm just going to double click to edit, give it a quick color. Now uh, what we're going to do in here is create two self attributes. We're going to create one called uh, Which Icon and then another one called Search Table. And we're going to leave those both set to zero right now. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and find the loop behavior. I have uh, individual videos about the loop behavior, loop over table, and everything like that. So if you're not too familiar with this behavior, uh, pause this video, go check out that video tutorial, and then come back, and you'll have a better understanding of this. Uh, but pretty much what this does is it's going to cycle through whatever we put in this loop uh, until a certain condition is met. So what's that condition going to be? Well, I want to spawn three unique actors on the scene. So I'm going to choose game. How many found is less than three. So what is this going to do? This is going to continue to execute this block of code until how many found equals three. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to choose a random number. So we're going to drag the change attribute into the library, into the loop here. And we're going to change self dot which icon to open the function here and choose random. For minimum, we're going to choose one. And for maximum, we're going to put four. Now, this is just for this example. You may have a hundred different icons, or you may want to choose a number between one and a hundred with no duplicates. And so you would just insert the maximum number you want in here. Click the green check mark to apply. Uh, and we're going to drag in one more change attribute. And we are going to then search the table for this value. Uh, so we're going to choose self.which table and click the little e to open the expression editor. And we're going to choose the table search function right here. Uh, for the table, we're going to choose chosen ID. The key that we're looking for, or the value that we're looking for in this table, is self.which icon. 
and we're searching a column. Uh, we're not searching rows, so we're going to be searching columns. So remove everything in here except the column, the COL. And the target row column, we're going to choose 1. Start range is going to be set to 1, and end range is going to be set to table row count. And for table, of course, we're going to choose game.chosenID. And we're going to want to find the exact match for this number, whatever we choose. So if it's 1, we're going to search the table to see if any row uh, has 1. And so that's what this is going to do. Now, we need to create a rule inside of this loop. And we're going to say when attribute self dot search table equals zero, we're going to add a row to the table. Now, what does this do? Uh, this is pretty much saying that when we have searched the table and when a match is not found, we're going to execute this block of code. So this the search table only uh, returns two values, zero or one. One meaning that the value has been found in the table, so we know that that value is somewhere in that table and then we could go and figure out where if we needed to, or zero if there is no match. So because we're choosing random unique IDs, we want to make sure that we only add that um, number to our list of unique IDs if it's not already included and it has not already been picked. And you'll see what we're going to do with that in a minute. So when the search table equals zero, we're going to choose chosen ID in the add or remove row behavior, and we're going to add row at the beginning, okay? And then directly beneath that, we're going to grab a change table value and place it in there. For table, open the expression editor and click chosen ID. Row is going to be set to 1 and column is going to be set to 1. And the value is going to be self, which icon. So this, uh, what this is going to do is, again, it's going to add a row at the top of the table. And then it's going to, uh, it's going to write, let's say the number is 2. So it's going to write the number 2 to that table, and then it's going to cycle back, and it's going to do it all over again. If it picks 2 again, and it already sees that 2 is in that table, it's not going to do anything, and it's going to cycle back through until it finds a unique ID. Now this is kind of cool because it happens instantly, and you don't have to worry about removing rows in a table, and it's really nice. So there's one thing that we're missing from this rule, and that is to add a change attribute beneath the change table value. And we're going to change game how many found to game how many found plus one because we just found a unique ID we want to make sure that we add that to the count because we only want to find three now if you want to find a hundred then you can replace three with a hundred and uh, and it'll work like that so that's all we need to do with the round rules let's click the back button and drag it onto the scene I'm gonna just shrink it down and move it out of the way so we can't see it while it's on the screen now, we need to do some stuff in the icon actor, so what we're going to do is open the actor, and we are going to create a rule at the top of the logic stack, and we're going to name this rule, we're going to say detect which icon. So what we're going to do is we're going to say when attribute game how many found equals which icon, we're going to change self. which image to table cell value table is going to be chosen ID row is going to be one and column is going to be one now what does this do um, in a few minutes we're going to drag out three instances of this actor onto the scene and then we're going to double click each actor and change this self which icon to one two or three um, and what this is going to do is I want to save space and RAM and everything, so I'm going to create three unique um, instances or code blocks within this one actor instead of creating three different actors. Now you could do that and it would work, but for this tutorial this is what I'm going to do. Uh, and so what we're going to do, this rule is now finished, so I'm going to collapse it here by clicking the arrow. And now I'm going to create a rule, and I'm going to say when self which image equals 1 I'm going to open my image tab here and grab my gem icon and place it in there. I'm going to open the otherwise section and go back into the behaviors tab in the library. Drag another rule into the otherwise and say when attribute self which image equals 2. Then I'm going to go into the images tab and drag the dice icon image into the rule. Open the otherwise. I'm going to 
uh, highlight the entire otherwise rule, click Command C to copy, and then click the otherwise section of this rule and press Command V to paste it into that otherwise section. So now we're going to say when which image equals 3, we're going to drag the chip icon and place it in the change image. Again, Command C, Command V, when it equals 4, because that's our maximum number that I had set in the um, round rules actor, we're going to change it to card icon. So there's our images. So I'm just going to collapse all of those rules and name them. And then we're going to create one final rule. Now you don't necessarily need to do this. I'm just doing this to add a nice effect. Uh, but I'm going to say when game at how many found equals three. So when we found three unique actors, which is what we want to do, I'm going to grab the interpolate behavior and drag it into the rule. And we're going to interpolate self position y to devices screen size height divided by two. So this is going to interpolate the y position of the actor into the middle of the screen. Duration I'm going to set to one, and I always like the ease in and ease out function here. So that's all we need to do in the gem. Let's click the back button and drag three instances onto the scene. Now I notice they're a little small. I'm going to just go in and maybe change them from 120 to 220 just to give a good size to these. Okay, so that's a little better. So I'm going to place one right in the middle, and they don't need to be completely lined up, but I'm just going to give them a good space here really quick. Okay, something like that. So this is kind of where we want them. So on the left, I'm going to start on the left and double click this actor, and we're going to change which icon from 0 to 1, because this is the first actor on the screen. And then I'm going to go to the middle one and change it to 2. And you guessed it, the third one, I'm going to double click and change to 3. The last thing we need to do is just drag these off the screen down here so that when they're ready, they can fly up and add a nice little effect. So if all worked well, we can now preview and see that. I'm going to close the, the preview here. See that we have three unique actors uh, which got their image from a table uh, which are, are number based. So if we hit the restart, you'll see that there's no duplicates. They're always a different actor, a different image. And so you could use this tutorial to just pick three random numbers, or you could take it a step further like I did, and after we've picked those three random numbers, then do something with them like spawning three actors. Um, so what you would then do, if you wanted to uh, just spawn one actor like I'm doing, is create a rule that said when self dot which image equals one, then you would go and do all your code for this actor if you wanted to, to do something else uh, from the others. And so then that's how you would build your logic uh, based upon how we have this set up right now. Alright guys, that's about it for this video tutorial. Until next time.